What's going on everybody? This Afro Think Tank today. I just want to talk a little bit about opportunities in Nigeria. You know, because I did make a video saying I was going to Nigeria pretty soon. And I, you know, I asked some of my subscribers, hey, give me some questions you guys would like to know. And I swear, I'm getting a whole bunch of good questions. I'm gonna have a whole list of videos to do just based off the questions that I'm getting from the video. So thank you for the contribution to that. So as I'm pondering and wondering uh, about what to do, you know, based off like what I'm already doing is I have a shop. It's a small shop. It's a damn shack. It's a hole in the wall. But I pre I like my hole in the wall because I'm literally starting from the bottom up, right? I love the experience. I love the journey. I'm a I'm a journey guy because if you ever noticed all these rich folks, once they get to where they're going. Once they reach the mountaintops, so to speak, they get all depressed because they ain't got no mission in life, right? It's like if you ain't got no mission in life, you got a bunch of money and after you bought all the shit and you done stimulated yourself by buying yourself a couple yachts that you used once, you know, and you got you paid for it to sit in the dock forever just to say, hey, I got a yacht. You know, how, you know, you know how it is, right? So after you have all the money in the world and you got nothing else to accomplish, people tend to start acting weird and doing weird shit right that's why i enjoy the journey you know as much as i would will will enjoy the destination the journey is like playing a video game but in real life right so as i'm pondering about all the opportunities in nigeria it's almost hard to really lock something down to be honest guys because there's so much opportunity it's hard to narrow like for my area right kitty the state is known for one major thing, education. The smartest Nigerians, arguably, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be some other Nigerians say, hey, no, it's this state, da 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 But Akiti, Ado Akiti, A-D-O Akiti, E-K-I-T-I, is known for education. It's where the smart Nigerians come from. They have a lot of schools. Uh, there's a lot of seasons as children, you know, colleges, universities, private schools, they come into the state, which is... It's a high elevation, they're in high elevation, very country, very hilly, got lots of hills and valleys and hills, beautiful red, uh, red dirt, very nutritious dirt, it's definitely a farm state. So if you're an agricultural type of person, then a kitty state, well, most of Nigeria will be perfect for you, but just from what I know, a kitty state will be perfect for like agriculture. Let's say you wanna go out there, you wanna get a whole bunch of land, you wanna farm a cash crop, you could do that, right? I also think it's a good opportunity for manufacturing. Like we need to start thinking about what manufacturing machines we can get to Nigeria or any country in Africa. You can do this with any country. What manufacturing what machines do they have in Nigeria now that can manufacture manufacture what, right? And just manufacture that thing. Like you can literally we're so used to in America, we're so used to these brands, right? We got all these brands that we used to buy. And we don't even think, well, damn, we could probably make our own, like toilet paper. You get a couple guys together, right? Find a toilet paper making machine. You can literally go build your own micro factory in Nigeria. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about manufacturing. Look, I'm telling you right now, I already got my eyeballs on some machines. I'm, 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 I'm looking up nylon making machines. I'm looking up uh, water, uh, water production machine, you know, making my own bottled water, like anything, every, see, you got people who look at the problems of Africa and all they see is problems. All they see is inconvenience, right? When I look at all those problems and inconveniences, all I see is opportunity and money. That's what I see, right? And so I would say if I were to take somebody, because let me tell you guys, I'm, about that life, right? So once I become comfortable with certain individuals and I vet you, I'm trying to take people to Nigeria. Like I'm trying to bring people to a kid. I'm trying to bring African Americans or African Caribbeans who got some real money, right? Who got money and real ambition and, and who's self-motivated. I'm trying to be that middleman to bring them to the state of a kid, a kitty so they can operate, start a business, create jobs, create, you know, industry. We need to create industry, manufacturing. How hard could it possibly be? You buy a machine, right? You read your damn manual. You get somebody to train you on the machine. Dude, I'm at the point where I'm like, 
we got enough leverage as Americans, we could literally, like, we can go to Nigeria, right? Get a machine that we don't know nothing about. Let's say we want to get a machine that makes, that, that processes yams and cassava to make yam flour. Let's say we get a machine and we're doing that, right? We don't know anything about that machine. But we got, I know that as if you're a middle class American, you got enough money to send four or five Nigerians to whoever is running a workshop on how to run that machine. You can pay for their stay, their food and everything until they learn how to use that machine. Whether a week, couple week workshop, whatever. I'm, I'm telling you, you can afford it. Create your own experts and then have them working in your manufacturing uh, plant uh, running your machine. Like, or you can get the guy, usually the people who sell on the machines have people who teach. You can pay that person to come up to whatever village you're in, train you how to use the machines, and, 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 and you can train a whole body of people that you hire. And I'm telling you, those people, you, you, you go to Nigeria, go to a village and say that you're, you're uh, looking to train some people to have an uh, opportunity to get a job, to learn a skill. Shit, what? Man, you say you're looking for 100 people, you'll be 1,000 goddamn people waiting for that opportunity. So finding the motivated people is not going to be a problem. Providing the access. I think for the newcomers, for, the, for us at this stage in our development for Pan-Africanism, we need pioneers who are willing to go out and do the difficult things first. Because the thing is, African Americans, for the most part, you know, we're used to this level of, we're used to all of this, right? And our problem is something we go to places and we complain that they're not at this level. But we gotta but we gotta take it into consideration. This level takes work. It takes services. It takes it takes it's companies that do this. There's companies that come out and clean this, make sure this is nice. There's companies that come out and make sure that this thing, see, is it's all about the trim, guys. You see what Nigeria is missing, what Africa's missing? They got the structures, but this will be all con like let's say this is concrete, right? They don't have the shiny stuff, the finishing touches, right? So if you know how to make concrete look good, like, because they build in concrete. Concrete's a better, it, it's solid, right? Can you make concrete look smooth and shiny? Because I've seen it, they got like this gloss stuff you can put on concrete. You can make concrete look beautiful. If you got that type of skill, shit, you go to Nigeria, I guarantee you somebody will pay you to make their building look better than the building next to it. There's, oh, you know how to fix roads? You know how to do roads? Plenty of business, I guarantee you. Like it's it's just, but for me personally, I'm thinking about manufacturing and growing. Uh, uh, uh what do you call it? Uh, greenhouses. Uh, you know, greenhouse technology, hydroponics. What, dude? I'm telling you. Look, all I need, like I'm already gonna do it. But what I want need to do is I gotta create a situation where I can bring people, right? Who understand the situation, got the money and motivation, because I can't babysit. That's the thing. That's Parent, we cannot babysit you. We can facilitate you, can't babysit you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm t it's everything, anything you can possibly think of. Ladies, oh my God, ladies, 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 ladies. What? You got a whole country full of African women who watch you on TV and dress and act just like you. Who looking to buy and wear the same clothes you wear. Who looking to do, do the same hairstyles you, you do. That's looking to protect, to, to, that's looking to, to perfect, you know, the, to perfect the, the, the wig making industry, to perfect the natural black hair industry, the, the lock industry. The lock it? What? Just doing locks? Listen, you women can, African American women, you can go there and sell yourself, right? To these African women. They, they adore you, right? They're your family, your cousin. They you go over there, y'all can have a squad. If y'all know how to get, if y'all females, y'all know how to get along with other females, you can go over there and have a whole army of females. And you can empower all of them and you can take over whatever industry you want. I'm telling you anything that you women, because, you know, we make mo industries make more money off black women. Right. Selling y'all black products. But we can produce all our own stuff and sell it to each other, empower each other. So the African, the African-American women, the Caribbean women, all y'all. Hey, you know how to cook? You know how to make some soul food? Shit. Go over there and start a damn restaurant in Lagos. Uh, 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 Abuja. Go start a so which one uh, what which one of you black women, you black men who chefs who can't who who wish you would have had a restaurant? Go over there, I guarantee you you can build, you can build and create your own restaurant. Have that shit run you can have that shit up and running in a few months if you got the money. 
I'm telling you, you can do anything you want. You don't think they want to eat that soul food? You don't think people want soul food? People want soul food. If you go to any, any, any international dinner event, the first food always to go. You can have every type of food, all the Caribbean food, all the African food, all the Indian food, all the Mediterranean food, all the Chinese food, all the Korean food, all the Japanese food, all the South American food. You can have all that you want. Guess what the first food that's going to be gone? African-American soul food, straight up. Always, every single time, because we, sorry to say, now I'm not sorry to say, we just cook better than everybody else. I don't care what y'all say. Damn it. Y'all keep having that jollof rice fight. Us African-Americans sitting back like, jollof rice, shit. That's the shit. Yo, we make this, we make jollof rice too. We just don't call it jollof rice. We got jambalaya, huh? got gumbo. We got the regular shit that we make in the house. We throw the chicken in there because we ain't got nothing else. That's that shit. It's all about the rice, right? But anyway, I'm not going to get into that wall. All right, that's anti-Pan-Africanism. All right, but we make better than y'all. Anyway, you know, so all I'm saying, we make better macaroni and cheese too. Y'all know we do. I don't know what's up with that macaroni pie you Caribbean people making. You African people, don't even say macaroni and cheese. That's our shit. Anyway, any, if you know how to go there and make the, the, the macaroni and cheese, you know how to make the greens, huh? You know how to make the cornbread? You know how to fry some good chicken? And the thing is, you can do soul food healthy. And the thing is, over there, all the ingredients is fresh. All the ingredients is natural. All the oil is pure. Yeah, you can make healthy soul food. They need that? You want that? I'm just telling you, it's just, it's just whatever. I'm excited when I go to back to Nigeria. I'm gonna go, I'm be going in stores. I'm be, I'm gonna try to show every angle of every industry I can possibly show to show that if you got the motivation, dedication, and the money, you come over here and do anything you want. I'm telling you. That's all I got to say. This Afro Think Tank, learn something, teach something. I'm out.